Here we have a biker racing down the hill and about to collide with a massless contraption which will then bring him to a stop. Now, why do we say massless? Well, the reason we say massless is because then we do not have to worry about energy leaving this system here during the collision. So, in other words, this we can consider the initial energy and then the final energy is when the biker comes to rest and those two values, the initial energy here and the final energy there, are going to equal each other because the, um, well, because no energy leaves the system in the collision because it's this massless uh, spring here. Great. So, we can use energy conservation to solve this problem. The initial energy equals the final energy. And what is the initial energy? Well, it's simply his potential energy of gravity, so I'll put a little g there, plus his kinetic energy, and then that'll equal the energy in the final state. He comes to a stop, so there's no kinetic energy, but he's still above the ground, so you have potential energy of gravity, and then, of course, we also have the potential energy stored in the spring. Well, we can write out the values. This is, uh, well, this will be mgh plus the uh, kinetic energy, one-half mv squared. And then that equals the potential energy down here, which I'll call mgh, let's put a little f there for final. And that is this height right here. That is the hf height. And then that's plus the potential energy stored in the spring, one-half kx squared. Now, I'm going to solve this problem without units, and that's something I never let my students do, but we, just for space reasons, so I encourage you to cancel off the units at home. All of the units in this problem are in meters, seconds, and kilograms, so if we input meters, seconds, and kilograms, we will also get out SI units of meters, seconds, and kilograms. All right, so let's plug in some numbers. So mass is 100 kilograms. The acceleration of gravity is 10 meters per second squared. And initially, he's at a height of 25 meters. And then that's plus the kinetic energy, which is 1 half times his mass, times the uh, speed that he's moving at squared. And then that equals in the final state, well, his mass hasn't changed. It's still 100. Acceleration of gravity hasn't changed, still 10. And then times this height that we'll have to find, plus the uh, spring potential, which is one half times a thousand newton meters, times the amount that the spring is compressed uh, squared. And that distance, well, what is that x squared distance? It's this distance right here. That's x right there. Great. Let's multiply out some of these numbers. Well, this here, a hundred times 10 times 25, that's 25,000. And then this comes out to uh, 5,000 because 1 half times 100 is 50. 50 times uh, 10 squared is uh, 5,000. So over here we have 30,000 and it's in units of joules. And then that will equal 1,000 times this final height, HF, plus 500 times the spring compression distance x squared. Well, it looks like we have one equation and two variables. That's no good. But actually, we can relate this height here in terms of the compressed distance x here by drawing some triangles. Let's pull out a little scratch paper. And let's draw this triangle. So let's take this to be the height that the spring started at, and we know after the collision it's been compressed by some amount, and this this distance here is x, and therefore, it, oh, most important, I got to put in the angle 30 degrees, so it's a 30-90 triangle. So if this side opposite of 30 degrees is 10 meters, then this length, that is the high, full hypotenuse, is 20 meters, then this right here will be, this distance here, which let me mark it in green to keep things clear, will be 20 meters 
minus x. And therefore, this height here, maybe I'll just draw a new triangle on the side. If this is 20 minus x, and if this is 30 degrees, well, then this side has to be half of that, so it's 10 minus x. So it's 10 meters minus, whoops, not x, minus x over 2 has to be half. Uh, 20 minus x divided by 2 is equal to 10 minus x over 2. So that height here, hf, is equal to 10 minus x over 2. Very good. I'll write that in here. And let's go back to our main page here. And we can now add that in to our equation. And you know what? Before we do anything, let's divide both sides by uh, 500. So 500. So doing that, I get um, 60 here. 1,000 over 500 is, um, well, that's just 2. And let's plug in for HF. HF, we know, is uh, 10 minus x over 2. And then that's plus x squared. Excellent. And now uh, we can just multiply through with the 2, and we get 20 minus x plus x squared. And that's all equal to 60. And then if we just um, bring the 60 over to the other side, we'll get x squared minus x minus 40 equals 0. Great. Now we just need to solve this uh, quadratic equation, and let's pull out our scratch paper again. So uh, we clear off a little space. Okay, so here's our quadratic equation. It's uh, x squared minus x minus 40 equals 0. Let the smart board catch up here. And solving for x using the quadratic equation, I know that, I oh, didn't quite get the zero, I know that in general it equals minus b squared, whoops, no, 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 let's get this right, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared uh, minus 4ac. Minus 4ac. There we go. And that's all over 2a. So what are these a, b, and c's? Well, it's, you know, here clearly a is equal to 1, here b is equal to negative 1, and here c is equal to negative 40. So now I can just uh, blindly plug things in and we get a uh, 1 plus or minus square root. Well, 1 squared is just 1, and then minus 4 times 1 times a negative 40, all divided by 2. And if we work this out and take the positive solution, we get x equals 6.84. But remember, x, that's the distance that the spring is compressed. The actual length that the spring has at maximum compression is, well, it's uh, 20 meters minus x. So 20 meters minus the uh, 6.84 meters. Well, that's equal to 7. Sorry, not equal to 7 at all. That's equal to 13.16 meters. And um, let's just finish it off here. So to two significant figures, we get our answer that the, not, excuse me, not x, x is the amount that is compressed. We get our answer of 13 meters. So that's the length of the spring at maximum compression. Right here, this would be the 13 meters. All right, not easy, but definitely doable.